fall 2012. My health was great. And after months of training, I just completed my first marathon. Rich Kirkpatrick ran 26.2 miles without really hitting the proverbial wall. But his endurance and faith would soon be tested as an illness took him beyond the brink of death. His body was just shutting down. And every possible coincidence and miracle that occurred, occurred because of those three guardian angels. It started with what seemed like the flu. I got some uh, pretty intense chills, uh, body aches, uh, extremely tired. Symptoms so severe, December 17th, his wife Jennifer took him to the doctor. When they said his blood pressure was 86 over 40, you're going right to the, right to the emergency, don't, don't go home. So the whole thing was actually kind of a little scary at that point. By the time Rich arrived here at Fairview Hospital, his organs were systematically shutting down from a lack of oxygen. Doctors diagnosed streptococcus B, but antibiotics, a blood transfusion, and other treatments just weren't working. That's the last point that I remember anything. Jen, your husband can't breathe, and we have to intubate him now. And I just burst out in tears. That's when something miraculous occurred, says Jennifer. An echo tech from the other side of the hospital just happened to see test results on Rich's heart. She's the only echo tech on staff that day that could have diagnosed the regurgitation. Doctors say the strep B bacteria had eaten away his aortic valve. Every time his blood pumped through, um, it was going backwards. The blood that was supposed to oxygenate his body wasn't able to make its way through the body. He was rushed to the Cleveland Clinic. That's when I called everybody and we started email chains. Prayer requests, which happened to reach Dr. Joseph Sabick's office, chairman of the Department of Thoracic and Cardiovascular Surgery at the clinic. I had gotten out of the OR relatively late that night and my secretary, my assistant, didn't look right. And I thought maybe something was going on and I asked her, I said, are you okay? You don't look right. And she says, I just got a very strange call from a friend of mine whose husband is in our intensive care unit on ECMO. And I said, really? And she said, yeah. I said, would you want me to go check it out? And she said, would you? Came out and said to me, Jen, your husband is dying. And I know they told you we're gonna do surgery tomorrow morning, but he'll be dead by then. And I'm gonna do surgery now. We cut out the infected valve along with all the infection and then put a new valve in. And so the blood now could go the right way. And Rich seemed to be doing well until December 22nd. He just crashed. He just, his blood pressure got down to, um, I believe it was 49 over 19. Jen called her friend and neighbor, Terry Barchak. She said, Terry, please, Blake is pretty strong. Can you tell him to like close the gates of heaven because I don't want my hus husband to go there yet. Terry's son, Blake, was one of four Brunswick teenagers killed in a tragic accident that June. Since then, she would often light this candle and pray. That day, it was lit for Rich. And moments later, the doctor walked out and he came over and, and he said he's stable. They said to me, they have no reason why he came back. Perhaps the young father and husband would tell them himself. At 12.02 Christmas morning, he finally woke up and soon began talking about a mysterious Christmas party. He said, you know, when did we go to a dinner party? I said, we didn't go to a dinner party. Okay, so we did, you know, we went Christmas shopping. Yes, we did this. Yes, we went to this dinner party. And she's, no, no, there's no dinner party. Rich insisted, said he even saw his grandmother who had died that year, and he was hanging out with three specific people. Blake Barcheck, Russ White, and her Uncle Jimmy all of whom had also passed away. Rich says they told him it was okay to move on. Well, okay for everyone but him. Yes, moving on is a good thing. Um, and it was in that time frame that I just didn't quite fit with that. Was this a near-death experience? Rich had coded once, nearly twice, if not for Blake's candle, says Jennifer. It wasn't a coincidence, it was Blake, right? It wasn't a coincidence. Terry Barchak agrees. I was blown away because I could not believe that this was happening. I'm like, wow, maybe he did see Blake in heaven. You know, maybe, maybe he saw Blake in heaven to tell us that he's okay. Both families believe this experience is proof of a higher power 
and the power of positivity mixed with a lot of prayer. It makes me, it just is really makes me happy. The more people I can tell this story to, um, the more people that have hope, then that might be the purpose. Some people say that, you know, I was a good person before all of this, and so that's why, um, but I'd like to aspire to be even better. In Brunswick, Suzanne Stratford, Fox 8 News.